is the fourth of our series of tutorials for signing. Signing is the licensing component that's used inside QZ Tray. Chances are, if you're here, you already know what QZ Tray is. It's a program that helps you print from a web page. So that means that the first requirement for this video is QZ Tray itself. So you need that installed. It does require Java. If you don't have Java installed on your desktop, it'll prompt you to install it. That needs to be running in order to start this. Another prerequisite for this tutorial is Visual Studio. In this case, we're using 2019. We're going to be using the MVC model view controller framework that .NET provides. We do have another tutorial that uses web forms and page methods. You can check that out in the link in the description. Also, if this is your first time using QZ Tray with a web page, you probably want to start off with our getting started tutorial. That's in the description as well. But we're going to start a new MVC project. Now, this is targeted at C Sharp. The reason I mention this is because it's very easy to accidentally click Visual Basic when you're creating a new project. .NET developers already know this. However, if you're starting from scratch, it's a common mistake. I wanted to point it out. Another thing, if you're using .NET Core, this tutorial will work very well. However, a lot of the file names have changed. Microsoft changed some of the directories around. So you're just going to have to adapt the instructions to apply to .NET Core. The rest of it will be the same. Let's start our new project. In previous signing tutorials, we would copy the demo folder over to the web root and then work from there. However, .NET does a lot of the website stuff for us. So instead, we're going to be doing it just like we did in the page methods tutorial. And we're just going to be modifying the example that .NET provides. An important part of this tutorial is a gist that we've created. The gist has code examples. We're going to be modifying two files. One of them is homecontroller.cs, and the other one is index.cshtml. The index.cshtml is going to handle the browser stuff, so it's what's going to communicate with our product. It also does require a little bit of JavaScript in order to set up the licensing. Whereas homecontroller.cs, that actually is the backend code. So this is the c -sharp code that's going to be executed to provide the signature which our product requires. So let's start off with the CSHTML. If you notice, this code references a file called qztray.js. We can grab that from directly from the installation directory, and we're going to do that. If you have any technical issues with this file, I would recommend going to our GitHub project page. You can always download the latest from there. If you prefer to fulfill your JavaScript dependencies using utilities like NPM, we do publish it in NPM as well, and that's up to date. So to find this qztray.js file, we're going to browse the app folder. It's located inside demo, JS, and there's our qztray.js. Now this location is going to differ if you're on .NET Core, but for regular .NET, we're going to paste it right inside scripts. Okay, that's our qztray.js. Now, if we were to run this code right now in the browser, um, it actually should work. It should uh, start using the API and start to work. However, we haven't created this controller yet, so we're going to get a, a 500 or a 404 in, in this URL. All right, there's our page. Now, because we're hitting some errors here, it's never making it down into our unit test, and that's okay, but at least we have our page loaded. And here you can see our 404.
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up this actual controller here, the sign message controller. This is part of our source example as well. It's in the home controller.cs example. Now you can place this source code in any controller. Um, we're using homecontroller.cs just because it comes with the default.net and we think that it's a good baseline. Let's fix those imports. little nuance of .NET. It's going to highlight everything until we stop our controller because we're changing the controller code right now. So now our sign message controller exists. However, we, we do have to make some changes before it's going to work. One of them is, is the controller references a file called privatekey.pfx. Now if you notice, the way that we calculate the path to this is we put it just outside our web root and uh, we go up a directory and then we're, we're going to put it inside a folder called private. Now this privatekey.pfx should look familiar. Uh, for the premium customers, those who pay us for support, you'll be receiving a privatekey.pfx as well as a digital certificate.txt as part of your subscription. However, if you're coming to this tutorial trying to do this and you're not a, a premium sub, uh, subscriber, you can generate these files on your own, um, but that is outside of the scope of this tutorial. So let's get our private key.pfx and make sure that it's in the right directory. So here's the private key.pfx that we have downloaded. Now, you can create this private folder anywhere that you'd like. It doesn't need to be called private. The reason we create it outside of the web root is so that you can't browse directly to this private key. The private key should be in a directory that's protected. And you'll notice that the signing examples do warn of this. Uh, please protect against your private keys. That's how our licensing model works. We appreciate that. So now that our private key is in place and our controller is in place, this line here should actually work properly. However, that's the signature portion. We still have to set up our certificate. And to do that, we need to make sure that our digital certificate.txt is in the right location. Now, this file you can share. Uh, people can see it. It isn't a big deal if this file makes it out there. So we're going to actually put this right in the, the web root. And there it is. We're going to start our website back up again. If you notice here, this first action required dialog says that it is trusted. We click allow. And this one, this is the signing, because you can see because it's talking to the printers. The second one comes up and it shows it's trusted as well. You can click remember this decision. And then you'll see that it actually connects, looks at the names of the printers, and returns that back to the page. If we refresh this page, you won't get the prompts at all. So that was it. That was a quick one. Uh, that's C Sharp and MVC. Um, you can adopt as needed to use .NET Core. Older versions of Visual Studio, the steps might be a little bit different. But that's really it. You import the JavaScript file. You set up these two files and then signing should work. If you have any questions, email us, support at qz.io. If you're not a premium subscriber, that's okay too. We have a free mailing list. 
It is qz.io slash support. And you can go there. You can post. Um, you can ask your questions there to our, our public mailing list. And um, you generally get a response within the same day. So thanks for watching, guys. Take care.